We now return to John Elway and Before They Were Pros on TNT. Aberdeen, Washington sits on the southwestern shore of Puget Sound. Logging trucks rumble through the town 24 hours a day on the way to sawmills up and down the coast. It was in this working man's town that Nirvana's Kurt Cobain shaped his hard-edged view of the world. Down at Hub's Muffler Shop, Cobain is memorialized in his blue-collar element. Evidence of Aberdeen's second most famous product is nowhere to be found. Long after he left town and after many moves, John Elway found fame and glory in Denver, Colorado, where he became famous for never giving up. Dave Wiesel to center in the shotgun. John Elway fades back. Elway's got the ball. To the end zone. strong right arm is legend. It all started back in Aberdeen on Joanne Lane. Well, this is Joanne Way. It used to be called Joanne Lane. And we're about six miles outside of Aberdeen. Then the ocean's probably what, 25 miles from here mm -hmm. as the crow flies. So it really was ideal for the kids to grow up in this area here. Then there was, what, 24 kids? On this one block. Sharon Samper was my friend in grade school and then they moved across the street. She'd had her twins too, so I think two and a half years, something like that, the two of us produced six children. So she had a station wagon that looked like a playpen on wheels, and we'd go places together with all these little kids. Five girls and one boy. That was John. <laughs> Poor kid. He, he was just a pretty neat little guy. <laughs> Red bow tie and all. <laughs> I loved being a twin. And we always shared a birthday, and it was really fun. He scratched my back and I scratched his. We kind of took care of each other. We stuck pretty tight together. My twin and I always had a great relationship, and she was really always covering for me. I was kind of the one always getting in trouble. She was nice enough to, to not turn me in and, and tell, on, tell on me all the time to Mom that I was doing some things I shouldn't be doing. But you know little boys, they'll pick up anything and throw. And all the little boys in the block would throw things. The only difference is John was more accurate. John would aim at something and hit it. Uh, you know, like I said, if it was round and you could throw it, I'd probably throw it. What few mailboxes we had along the, the street here, well, I bet you John hit those nine out of ten times when he'd throw at them. He, he didn't miss very often. And the same thing with the telephone poles. They took a beating. You know, you know, the things would slide a little bit. You'd have to lead it out there, you know, and you'd have to put it out far enough. And so, it, and the flatter the rock, the more the, it would slide to the left. I was mostly ducking. <laughs> I saw Dick a few years ago, and I said, you know, Dick, if John had listened to us, we both could have ruined his career. Because <laughs> he did. He just, he really did like to throw things. My dad was a coach at Grace Harbor Junior College, and um, he coached their football team. Right out in front of the college was a huge carving of a man holding the big rope, and his name was Charlie Choker, and they were great, the Grace Harbor Chokers. That was a hard one to live by when you had the interpretation of, of the Chokers, but it was the Grace Harbor Chokers. It was a big, uh, like a, a lumberjack type guy that, you know, his shirt was off, and you know, big, strong, brute. I remember every time we drive by to go see Dad at work, we'd just, you know, we had to sing the song, Charlie Choker, Charlie Choker. It was a chant. We just said Charlie Choker over and over and over. You talk about coaching and teaching, and uh, that's what I think coaching is, is teaching. He realized that it was a lot more fun winning than it was was losing. You know, we saw my dad after wins, and we saw him after losses, and I think it made us more competitive, if anything. I couldn't ask for a better father, but uh, also was a great, great football coach. Jack Elway's coaching odyssey took his family to Missoula, Montana, and Montana State. Pullman, Washington, and Washington State. Then California, San Fernando Valley, and Cal Northridge. There, Coach Elway had just one criteria for picking a new house. He was going around and interviewing all the different uh, football coaches in the San Fernando Valley about the offense that they ran. He just happened to buy a house in that area so that John could go to Granada Hills High School and have Jack Newmeyer for a coach. 
That's how we happened to live where we did. John Elway brings out the Highlanders at the 47-yard line. They sure do, and uh, you can bet that they're going to open up quick like they usually try to do in a game. Go for that quick bomb and get on the board. Their head coach, Jack Newmeyer, you know, threw the ball in high school 35, 40 times, which is very unusual. And so I was excited about playing quarterback, getting to throw the football and moving down there. Chris Sutton, touchdown, and the Highlanders are on the board. Oh, First of all, he's fearless. He Second, he had good feet. Everybody knows he had a great, strong arm. Long, long, the pass is complete to Chris Sutton. What else do you need? I mean, he had vision. He could see the field one corner to the other, and he'd get in trouble back there, and that might be turned into his biggest play, and most time it did, you know, and he'd, he'd just roll around. Every time we went back to pass, it could end up in a touchdown. Touchdown, Granada Hills! And the people just cannot believe it. And he did a lot of the same last minute, you know, wins like he does when he's with the pros, so. I've just been watching him forever. <laughs> there are 13 seconds left to go in the ball game. 39, 35, and can you believe it? And he has 432 yards, and he has four touchdowns. You're a coach, and, and you're a father. As a father, you can get pretty irrational or, or not objective about you know, maybe how good your son is. And I looked at her when we were leaving the stadium, and I said, I wonder if he's as good as I think he is. <laughs> And she looked at me and said, well, you don't know nobody does, you know. After uh, John graduated from high school, I had one more opportunity to coach him in the Shrine game, North and South Shrine game in Southern California. The things he did in that game, I just, uh, I look at him now and I think, gosh, dang, he was only a high school kid doing all this stuff at this time. It was really something. John Elway in at quarterback, number 11. And John Robinson, here's a young man to watch, right? Bill, I think he might be the finest quarterback produced in Southern California in the last 10 years. Elway really impresses me in his ability to scramble and throw the football. He, he, you know, he's able to move and throw, and I think that's the sign of the ultimate passer, the guy that can just stand in one spot and throw his fine. But Elway pumps the ball up the field at least 50 yards. That's a sensational job by both people. Yep. This hardly seems possible, but they, were, they sent Elway in for one play and split him wide to the left and threw a pass to him. John's kind of having a good time tonight. John Elway's back in the ball game now, going right to the shotgun, so fireworks are going to start again. The thing that impresses me so much about John Elway is the variety of throws he has. He can throw moving down the line, he can scramble, he can throw off his back foot. Uh, he can do a lot of different things. Look at, look at the way he drills this football. Look at the way that ball travels through the air. <clears throat> Watch Elway again here now throwing. He's, he's rushed, he has to throw off his back foot. He's not in good position to throw the football. He throws it about 40 yards right on the money. Bill, he's flat the best quarterback I've seen come out of high school. And I, see, I think we're going to see one of the future greats in uh, John Elway. Those baseball teams still bothering you, trying to keep you from playing football? Uh, still a little, yeah. Yeah, I'm still talking to the Royals a little, so. What's it going to be, football? Or? It's going to be both. I'm not sure in what, though. But you're going to college? Yeah. Whereabouts? Stanford. And John had just signed to go to Stanford. And Jack and I are sitting there at the table, and you know, he said, here I got the number one quarterback in the country sitting across the table from me every morning at breakfast. He said, and I can't get him to play for me. He said, I don't get to coach him. That's kind of a gut breaker. He said, I really wanted that kid, but Stanford's got him. I think nowadays, they, well, he's a natural athlete and everything came easy, but uh, he set a lofty goal. He wanted to be the best quarterback that ever played the position. John Elway's storybook career has assured him a place in the Pro Football Hall of Fame. Looking back, John has only one regret. And really, if, if there's one thing that I could change if I went back, you know, I, I'd probably change and go play for my dad, because I think that would have been something that would have been, a, you know, a lot of fun. And, and uh, he threw the ball every down, too. So, I mean, as a quarterback, it's a perfect situation. And, but I did miss playing for him. The way this worked out, I think, uh, was best because we had always had a father-son relationship. Now we're friends, and he's my best friend. If I'd have made a, a, a program or a, like a blueprint, I'd have undersold him <laughs> in terms of a, an ideal son.